Hello colorful quilters and welcome back to another episode of Color Girl on YouTube. I decided that I want to start a series of making traditional quilt blocks but in modern, new, and interesting ways. The classics are wonderful. They're always going to be go-to's for modern quilters and so let's learn how to make a few of them and how we can put them together in fun and modern creative ways. Okay? Are you ready? Let's go. So the Irish chain block has been made in a lot of different variations. You'll see really simple ones made with just nine, block, nine patch blocks um, sewn together or more complicated ones with many, many rows of squares so that the design is larger. I decided to make mine all black and white fabric. So I'm using a solid white, a solid black, and then black and white prints for my medium value. Okay, so the overall effect is that you see the black check pattern that crisscrosses the quilt, the white is in between, and then the medium value or black and white prints create sort of a secondary pattern. And that's going to be more or less pronounced depending on the color um, that you choose for that piece. So mine is a little bit like not super contrasted, doesn't really stand out a lot, but it's just kind of like a shadow there. But if you can imagine if you chose for your three fabrics, like a navy blue, a red, and a white, then you would really get that kind of plaid effect of the dark squares, the red secondary pattern in between, and then the white. It'd be very, very crisp and very defined. So choose your fabrics to, based on how much you want your design to show and kind of the look and feel that you're going for. I wanted to make my blocks rather large, so I'm using two and a half inch squares. But don't worry, it looks like this would be a ton of work to sew because of all of those little squares. But I'm going to show you how to do it with strips, still having great variety and scrappiness like you see here, but making it a lot quicker and easier to sew. Okay, so choose three fabrics that you want to do, or another option would be to just choose one representing the black in mine, so like something kind of bold, something representing the white in mine, so that could be something light or a small print. And then if you want, you could use like a variety of prints and colors for the secondary stripe, the, the ones that I'm making black and white, or you could use them a lighter version of what you use for your, your crisscross squares. So there's lots of different options. At the end of the video, I'm gonna show you some ideas and different ways that you can put these together. Now, obviously it's gonna be pretty stunning to have a whole bunch of these black and white blocks just next to each other like I have these two starting. But there's different ways that you can make your quilt more or less complicated and add some, add some variety to it. So I'll give you some ideas and we'll talk about that toward the end of the video. But first I wanna show you how to make a block. So we are going to make one block today. It, it, they are 14 inches finished, so 14 and a half inches unfinished. So this is what we're gonna do today. And I'm, like I said, I promised, I'm gonna show you how to make it a lot easier than cutting a whole bunch of little squares. Okay, let's go to the cutting mat. Let's do a quick review of all of the cutting that you need to do to start out with. You are going to need two strips of black that are two and a half inches by the width of fabric. Okay, you're going to need one strip that is white, that is two and a half inches by the width of fabric. And you're going to need three strips of the print that is two and a half inches by the width of fabric. Now, obviously, cutting width of fabric strips is going to give us way more pieces than we need for just one block. But we are planning this as if we're making lots of blocks to make a whole quilt. The next set that we need to make is for this section here where it's a four and a half inch rectangle with a two and a half inch black and white square. So cut a strip of fabric that is four and a half inches 
by width of fabric out of your white and then cut another two and a half inch strip from your print. And again, you can cut a full width of fabric strip, especially if you're using the same fabric for all of them, or you can cut shorter lengths um, for more variety. I just have a long strip of this um, black and white dot. So for my next set, I'm also going to sew the four and a half inch strip of white to a two and a half inch strip of black and white, and that's going to give me these sashing units. Okay, so let's go to the sewing machine and make all of our strip sets and press them. And I will come back and I'll show you how to cut them and arrange them into the smaller units that you need. Okay, let's go to the sewing machine. Okay, I am back from sewing and pressing my strips and I have my four and a half inch white strip with a two and a half inch print strip. And I have my kind of Frankenstein um, scrappy strip that's black print white. Okay, so the next thing that I need to do is cut these into two and a half inch sections. Okay, and for this I want to show you one of my favorite um, tools. This um, June Taylor ruler with slots for cutting. These are wonderful for any type of cutting that where you need to cut lots of pieces the same size, particularly squares and rectangles. It, it makes life a lot easier for projects like this. You can get the exact same effect just by using your ruler to cut the, the pieces in sections like we are. Okay, so for this I'm going to line one edge of my fabric strip up with one of the straight lines on my mat because I want to make sure that these are really straight so that when I cut them into sections I have nice um, perfect pieces. Okay and then I can put this one just right on top and I'm going to line the edge of that strip up with the black one I have to make sure that this is pretty straight up here and I have that set. Okay, and then I'm going to take my ruler and place it right over that. So this first line on the ruler, I'm going to line up with the edge and bottom edge of my fabric. And the first slot here, I'm going to line up with the edge, the end of my fabric up here. And so that I end up cutting off that selvage. Okay, so I have my line lined up with the same line on my ruler or on my cutting mat that I lined my fabric up with. Get that straight and I can kind of eyeball that that looks pretty straight. Looks pretty good all throughout. And then the first cut I'm going to make is this first slot for zero. Okay, that's going to give me a, a straight edge there. And then since I want two and a half inch pieces, I'm going to go to two and a half. And then five. And then seven and a half. And then ten. Okay, this only goes up to twelve, so that's as far as I can get for my first go round. So I'll get rid of those selvage pieces. And then this gives me my two and a half inch units. And then I'll just repeat the whole process and keep working down, working down my strip. So I'll line them all up again. One edge of my fabric on the line of my mat. And do another go. And I will just keep working my way all the way down. Now, in case you're wondering, in the spots where my strips change, like right here, I'll have some wonky pieces. So this one's good. And oh my goodness, I think I need a new cutting blade. What do you say? 
And then I'll keep working these along here. So obviously this one's not gonna work for my finished quilt. So what I'll do is I do have two perfectly good two and a half inch squares of white and black. So I will just take them off of these print pieces and save them for other little scrappy pieces that I have like this from future strips. And then I can, I can end up sewing them together in individual pieces um, to other squares that I have left over from strips. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hang on to these two and a half inch squares um, and just get rid of these scraps with my seam ripper. I'll show you how to do these cuts if you don't have one of these slotted rulers. It's just as easy to do with your regular ruler just by doing what I did before of lining it up, making sure that you've got it straight. You want to straight across here, straight here, and then cut two and a half inch units just working down your strip. Now periodically you will want to stop and check that you've got that they're straight because this sometimes you know I don't maybe it's just me but the end my end starts to get a little crooked if I cut one off then a bunch of them get off so I always stop periodically and make sure that I cut and have really straight sides just because there might be shifting or I'm, and I'm definitely not perfect at cutting. Okay, so that gives me enough of these pieces to make my block. Okay, we have started on the components of the piece that we need to make our blocks. So at this point, if you're planning on making um, several blocks to make a full quilt, you may want to pause here and repeat the steps I just showed you to make enough of these little pieces to make all of the blocks that you plan to make. Especially if you want kind of a scrappy look like I do, you can make more of these strip sets with different prints um, and different colors to create the variety that you want. And that way you have a good selection to choose from to make a lot of different looking blocks. Now, if you're making your blocks with just three different colors, you can stop right now and, and follow me as we move forward to complete a, for our first block. Um, or you can stop and sew a lot of your pieces together um, so that you can just kind of speed through chain piecing a whole bunch of blocks at once. But so our next step is to put all of these components together and complete our first Irish chain block. Okay, let's do that now. Our next step is to take all of these units that we made from our strip sets and turn them into nine patch units for our blocks. Okay, so this is where it's important to make sure that you orient the pieces correctly so that you maintain your um, checkerboard pattern in your finished blocks. First of all, a unit that's black print white, and then one that's print black print, and then another black print white, but turned reversed so that I end up with white on two corners, black on two corners, and a black in the center. Okay, so I'm gonna make four units like this, all set up the exact same way. Okay, so you can start to see how it's gonna to come together. And then just so that you can imagine where we're going with this, um, once we sew these together, um, to make the corners of the box, we're gonna take that unit that we sewed with our four and a half inch strip, and that's going to go in between these like this, okay? So keep in mind, for this one, we pressed toward the solid color. So again, when we go to sew these together, we wanna to press toward the solid color again. So we'll sew these together, press toward the black, sew these together, press toward the black, and then add these third pieces and press toward the white. Okay, so we're always going out toward the solid color. That way when we go to sew these together, they'll fit really nicely. Okay, so your next step is to arrange four of these nine patch units and get them all sewn together. Okay, I finished sewing my four nine patch units and we are ready to start uh, making even bigger pieces and moving toward putting our whole block together. So um, I've got my four nine patches. I'm going to add two of these longer rectangles that I made 
in our first steps to each side. Okay, and then the center piece is just two of those units, two of these units with a black square in between. Remember that black square that I had left over from one of the, um, the cuts that I made that didn't have enough of the print attached to it? So, I, and I told you I was gonna unpick those and save that square. So the, those, those types of scraps are great for your center squares. Okay, so these are the three pieces that are going to make up my finished block. So my next step is to go back to my sewing machine and sew these rectangle units to two of my nine patches like this. So I'll sew, sew, and press those. Now for this one, since my center one is pressed toward the black, I'm going to want to have this one also pressed toward the black. So when those are sewn together, I'll press them out this way. Same thing on this one and same thing on that side. Okay, so let's go ahead and sew these rectangle units together and then add the second nine patch to make a complete unit. We're going to have two of those. Okay, getting so close to having our finished block and you can really start to see it coming together. So I sewed these two um, nine patches with the rectangle in the center. Same thing here, like I told you about before. Next step is to sew our center strip to one side. So, and as you can see, because of the way we were so clever with our pressing throughout these, our seams line up nicely and that gives you a good gauge to make sure that you're you're matching up your corner so that your squares look really good. Okay, so make sure that, that those edges are nice and lined up. You're gonna sew across here to the first half, press that, and then add the second half and that's gonna finish your block. So let's go ahead and do those two seams and we'll come back and see how it all came together. We did it! Here is our finished block. What do you think? I am pretty excited about how all of these are coming together. Let's put this one up on so that we have four of them. You can really start to see how the pattern is starting to form. But what do you think? I think these are really cool. I, I, I'm always surprised and how much fun it can be to make a classic traditional quilt block and kind of spice it up a little bit with your own taste in fabrics or like we did here with all of the scrappy black and white prints it really gives it a different look but you still have enough contrast to see the black and white pattern um, moving across the quilt it's kind of like plaid um, anyway i think that's really fun i also i have a surprise for you um, I made a couple of them in the reverse color. So they have, these have black instead of like the black and white are reversed. So what do you think of that? Like it has a, it has a really surprisingly different look more so than I thought it would. And it's a really good example of how contrast can kind of make or break or at least change the effect of a patchwork design. So I feel like the one that's reversed where the white is the crisscross checkerboard shape is you 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 definitely don't get a strong effect from that. You the, it blends more with the black and white shapes and you just get sort of like a kind of a blurry like maybe there's kind of a pattern cross crisscrossing there but nothing like the really strong um, black shape here so nothing wrong with this I actually think that they're pretty cool and it could be a, an interesting experiment to see how like going from dark to light versus light to dark affects your design so um, I didn't cut any sashing strips so I have a feeling that that would add a lot to it too to have that black in there um, and give you a little more drama but kind of cool huh um, I tried putting them together like putting the black ones next to the white ones but then I realized that that made it really complicated 
for what to do in between them. Um, you could put them right up next to each other. Let's do it like this. So you can see how that would look if you put those right next to each other, which I, I'm not sure that I really like that. So it's different and it would probably be fine, but um, I don't like it as much as I thought maybe I would when I was making the, the blocks. So um, I think I would stick with one or the other, either either black to white or white to black. Oops, there goes that one. Okay, I told you that I was gonna give you some other suggestions for creative ways to lay these out. And as you were making them, did you think of any different um, variations on your own? Um, one of the first thing that came to mind for me was that if I wasn't doing, if I wasn't committed to doing an all black and white quilt, I'd love to do just these center squares um, with like a bright color to contrast. So do all of the black and white and then do just the center squares, for example. Or if you wanted a little bit more color, you could do this center nine patch and really emphasize that as a shape, which is just such a cute shape. Um, so you could do something like that just by adding a little bit of color in with the black and white, you're gonna get, you know, your eye is gonna move across the quilt a little bit differently than it might have. Like I said before, you can get rid of these sashing strips and just put the blocks right next to each other. What that will do is, um, let me take these off. I didn't mention before, um, but these sashing strips are two and a half inches by 10 and a half inches. Okay, so if you're going to put yours together the way that I have it laid out here, you're gonna need a two and a half inch black square at the corner of each, where each block comes together. And then in between each block, so in the rows, you're gonna do a two and a half inch print square, a 10 and a half inch white strip, and then another two and a half inch print square. Print square. And you'll sew the, all of that in a row and then the same thing in the subsequent rows. And then you'll need to make long strips that are square, 10 and a half inch strip, square, black square, and so on, and put those in between your rows, okay? So that's gonna be how this quilt would be constructed if I was making a whole bunch of blocks and making a full quilt, okay? Let's see how they look if we just put them right next to each other rather than um, spaced with the sashing. Um, you're gonna see how it creates, you get a bigger black square right in the center, which I think is interesting and just kind of gives you a different, and there again, that gives you an option um, for a different design too. If you were to make the corners of the blocks all a color instead of black. So if you'd kept everything else the same, but made the corners in a color, then you would get these solid, solid color squares where the blocks come together. So that's kind of cool too. Like imagine if like this created like a pink square and then a yellow square and you know all, all across your quilt. That would give it a different look. Um, another suggestion um, that I thought of too, because I'm surrounded by beautiful fabric, um, what if we took like a really beautiful multicolored like floral or large scale geometric print or something like that and instead of making blocks to put all next to each other, take a few colors from your fabric. So for this one, I might do some yellow, some green, and some peach or something like that, or like the creamy background color with shades of green, and make the Jacob's Ladder um, blocks with those colors. And then instead of putting them next to each other, so just make like half pieced blocks and then just cut squares, 14 and a half inch squares of your really pretty focus fabric and put them in between and then do some, some pretty quilting on there. So that would be a way to simplify the design. If you wanted to make fewer of the pieced blocks, you could 
um, alternate them with just solid pieces of fabric in a really beautiful print that you like. And because I'm a scrappy kind of like, I love the scrappy look of quilts, um, the, the last suggestion that I'm gonna give you um, is if you have um, something like a jelly roll, which are the, the roll-ups of two and a half inch strips, um, whether it's print or solid, but I'm thinking prints, um, what you could do is take two colors that you like from that, that roll um, so let's say blue and pink, if your prints were uh, different colors with blue and pink and other things. So replace the black squares with your blue, replace the white with your pink, and then just use the two and a half inch strips from your roll up, your jelly roll, uh, in place of these prints. And you can just place them randomly, right? So just take your two and a half inch strip Piece them like I showed you with your two solid colors and then make them into your blocks and it'd be kind of a cute way to show off um, a variety of prints from like your favorite designer or collection. I did have one other idea. I told you that was the last one. But I, another thing that I think would be super fun if you are planning ahead um, with your design or if you want to draw it out in color, I think it would be cute too to plan it so that these squares, these print squares that come together, of course you with the sashing, where they come together, like have all of those be the same color, but different from block to block. So I think that would be a fun way to put them together so that you have, you still have the overall pattern of the black crisscross um, checkerboard and then the white in between, but then you, you would create a new shape, a new emphasis by having the colors in sort of these square um, shapes. So just something to think about. So I'm sure there's a million things that, million different ideas um, that you guys could come up with to make your Irish chain unique and you and featuring your favorite fabrics. So I hope you've enjoyed making this block with me. Um, I definitely want to do some more of these traditional blocks. So um, tell me what you think if you'd like to see more. Um, leave comments here. And um, if you're interested in seeing more of what I do, you'll find me at colorgirlquilts.com. Um, thanks for watching and give, make sure you give me a like and subscribe to Color Girl Quilts. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.